This is ADT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. The title of this video clip is Communication Technology as a Profession, Interview with Becky Robinson. In the past few years, digital communication technologies have become increasingly important in our society. In fact, they have become so important that some people have made a living out of them. To give you a better idea of this concept, I interviewed social media star Becky Robinson. The analysis questions for this video clip are the interview questions. You are very active in social media, but I see you're also a prolific author. I was wondering, how did you enter the world of social media? How did it all start? How does social media serve your career? I see from your website, weavinginfluence.com, that you offer several services to authors and thought leaders. How do you help others through social media? What would you recommend to students who are entering the workplace and who want to get into social media? Hello, Becky. Thank you so much for agreeing for, uh, to be interviewed. I have uh, four or five questions for you today. Um, I know you're an expert in social media and uh, you, uh, you've been very active in social media. You're also a very prolific author. And I was wondering, um, how did you enter the world of social media? How did it all start? Sure. So it all started um, back in 2009 and I had been a stay at home mom for about eight and a half years and a friend convinced me that I should get on Facebook. And that was kind of my first entry, you know, just signing up for my own personal Facebook account. And I had been on Facebook for about three weeks when a friend of mine posted and said he was looking for freelance writers. And I had always enjoyed writing, but I'd never really published any writing. And so as a result of this friend posting and needing freelancers, I ended up doing some freelance writing for a university. And after doing the writing for about three months, uh, my friend who had hired me confided in me that this university had been thinking for a while about starting a blog. Now, I had always read blogs and really enjoyed blogs, but I had never written one. Um, and he kind of took a chance on me. And so I um, submitted a project proposal to, to create this leadership blog for the university. And when I met with the marketing director to talk about the blog, one of the things she said was, hey, have you ever considered using Twitter? And this is when Twitter was still somewhat new back in 2009. I think it started in 2007, but not it wasn't very widely used the way it is today. And so I said, well, I'd be willing to try it. And then, so after doing the blog for a while and doing the Twitter for the blog, the folks at the university asked me if I would also consider doing Facebook for all their university accounts. And so it was really a matter of just learning while I did it and um, just kind of experimenting and kind of finding my way. And so, you know, I kind of started out with this perspective of, well, I like writing, I'll be a writer. And then as a result, just learned all sorts of things about social media and quickly found how wonderful it was to make some amazing connections through social media. And then, you know, somehow from that first entry into Facebook, I uh, was able to turn social media into my career. Okay, so if I understand well, um, you, you were not a writer before your entry into, into social media. That is correct. I mean, I always kind of viewed myself as a writer. I liked writing, but no, I wasn't working as a writer. So entering social media and writing as a career came at the same time. And I, I basically um, have done a lot of writing in service of my social media career in terms of creating content and resources that will help others learn about social media. Okay. That's, that's very interesting because a lot of people thought that, that you know, social media was basically the end of writing because people write so fast and you know, a lot of people are you know, thinking that the, the traditional role of the writer is to sit at home and write you know, uh, multiple versions of a book and you know, wait for years before the book gets published. And on the contrary, for you, social media was a kickstarter into your career as a writer. Absolutely, that's true. Okay. That's very interesting because a lot of people thought that that you know social media was basically the end of writing because people write so fast and you know a lot of people are you know thinking that the, the traditional role of the writer is to sit at home and write you know uh, multiple versions of a book and you know wait for years before the book gets published and on the contrary for you social media was a kickstarter into your career as a writer. Absolutely, that's true. That's that's interesting. So I guess that answers my second question. How does social media serve your career? I guess it's your 
it's your pen and paper. <laughs> when I think about how social media has kind of helped me in building and growing my business, all the connections that I've found have come through social media. So when I look at all the clients that I've received, they've all come as a result of either someone I've met through social media or a referral of someone who met me through social media, where those connections kind of feed from one another. I'll give you an example. Um, I, after I did the work for the university, I went to work as a social media marketing director for a leadership consultant. And one of my first projects in working with him was to help him launch a book. And that was back in February of 2010. And so through that process, I met this woman. Her name is Jessie Lynn Stoner. And Jessie has referred more business to me than anyone else. And I met her on LinkedIn. And we've met in person. And I've never worked for her but my online connection to her through LinkedIn um, made it possible so that she had a certain opinion of me and the work that I do and then referred me to lots of other clients along the way. That's not a question that I had prepared, but now that you were saying it, I was wondering um, what, what basically directs your, your profile on LinkedIn. I haven't connected with you on LinkedIn, and I'll do that as soon as we finish uh, the interview, if you don't mind. But um, what basically guides your profile? How do you inform people about what's happening with you? How do you get credibility on LinkedIn? Uh, what would you suggest to people? I mean, in a nutshell. Sure. Well, so the... The first and most important suggestion I have for LinkedIn, and it's actually the advice that I would give on any other social media channel as well, is you need to connect to as many people as possible. So you don't necessarily need to connect to people you don't know, but you want to think back into your personal history of anyone you've ever worked with, anyone you've ever done business with, old friends, classmates, and you want to build as many connections on LinkedIn and on other social media sites as you can because you never know when the person is going to be the right connection for you. So in the case of my Facebook story and how my entry into freelance writing came from a Facebook friend, he wasn't anyone I particularly knew very well. He was a friend from junior high. He was what I would call a weak connection. And I think sometimes we think that all of our best leads for our career or all our best job opportunities are going to come through someone we know really well. And the truth is, quite often, the person who's going to be the right audience for our content or our ask is maybe someone that we don't even know that well. And the only way we're going to know that is to stay connected to them and share contact with them or content with them. And then hopefully over time, there can be opportunities that arise. So if you ever look at your LinkedIn profile, you'll notice that LinkedIn will tell you how many people you're your connections connect you to. So for example, I have 896 connections on LinkedIn, which connect me to over 16 million people. And so uh, the larger your network, the larger the potential that you can have in terms of growing your career and finding opportunities. So the first thing is to connect to as many people as possible. The second thing is to make sure that your profile is complete. So, um, you know, follow the instructions that LinkedIn gives you to have a very complete and well-rounded profile. And then also think strategically about the words in your profile. So what I would say to anyone who was asking is figure out what are the words that people will search for and find you. And so you need to hone in on those keywords. Um, and so in my case, those keywords are, say, book marketing, book publicity, um, book promotion. And then you want to take those keywords and you want, just like you would on a website in terms of search engine optimization, you would put those words on your website so that your website is rich with those terms. You want to make sure your LinkedIn profile is rich with those terms that you want people to use to find you. And so not in like a stupid way where you put your words every other sentence, but in a natural way. So as you describe your past work experience, as you describe your education, you want to weave those words into your profile so that when people are looking for what you do, they're going to find you first. Okay. Well, that, that's very good advice. Um, so if I, if I jump up to the next questions because you, you started talking about it, um, I saw your website, uh, weavinginfluence.com, which I thought was very original. And I, honestly, you know, what I could see is obviously you're trying to find several little bits of, uh, I guess, threads and, and you know, trying to tie them together. That's the metaphor that I saw from your website. And you can you know, basically tell me if my, my reading of your website was right. Um, but I see that you're offering several services to authors and thought leaders and you know, other people who want to get, get active in social media. How do you help others with social media uh, or through social media? Uh, well, um, 
there are, uh, you know, obviously a variety of ways that we help people. But I think for the most part, what I try to do in the work that I do with people is to share what I know and what I've learned in a way that can make a difference for them. So I think right now, um, you know, people who aren't active in social media are looking for, well, how do I do this? You know, how how can I um, connect with others online? How can I share my content? How can I get my voice out there? How can I get my book to be heard? And so based on kind of what I've learned through trial and error and experimentation, um, my goal is, is to help people understand the best practices and implement them. And then I guess in a secondary way, my team actually comes alongside authors and thought leaders, and we actually help we do it for people as well. So, you know, a lot of authors or busy business people just don't have the time to use social media to market themselves. And so we support that effort. You know, we come up with a strategic plan and tactics and goals, and then my team actually implements those plans on behalf of people. But what I mean by a thought leader is um, anybody who wants to be known for their content online. So, um, you know, quite often, you know, people have ideas that they want to add to the marketplace. You know, they want to help their ideas be heard and they want to add value with the content that they're creating either on their blogs or in their books. And so um, the kind of what I've said before is if you want to be a thought leader online, you have to share your thoughts online. And so we help people l learn how to package their content and thoughts in a way that they'll reach more people and get people to in in interact and engage with their content. So there is science behind it. Uh, I think, you know, I think there, I think there is, I think, you know, we have a, a series of best practices that we implement. Um, but I think for the most part, honestly, it, it's quite simple. And it has to do with showing up and sharing what you know, and building connections with others. Uh, one of my uh, favorite things to say about social media is that you have to add a lot of value to the community before you can ever extract any value. And so the value that we can add is in the things that we know and the thoughts that we share. And uh, quite often you have to give a lot of that away for free before you can ever actually extract value and ask someone to pay you for what you know. Great. That's a very nice explanation. And, and I guess my final question would be, what would you recommend to students who are entering the workplace and who want to get into social media? You, you did give a lot of tips there, but I was wondering if you had any other uh, things to add. So I would definitely recommend that if students want to use social media as a career, that they start by jumping in and building their own brand online. Um, so I highly recommend that people blog, that people have um, profiles on all the various social media chat platforms and that they seek to build relationships with as many people as possible and to share their unique and differentiating value. So whatever interest they have, um, that they take the time to write about it. And, you know, you might, it, it, writing might be hard or not come easily, but just practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And um, I think really, honestly, the best way to learn social media is to be in the space and experiment and um, just be out there. Right. So like, like, like Mikey says, just do it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think that uh, students need to realize that whatever they share online it becomes part of their brand. And so I think quite often, you know, if people have been using social media with this mindset, like this is just a fun place where I connect with the people I know and my friends, um, that the way you approach the channels might be different than if you're actually thinking about it as, you know, everything I share is contributing to the brand image that people are going to have of me. And so I would say, you know, um, try, try to get away from this idea that social media or Facebook especially is just like a fun place to hang out uh, and be careful of what you share. Be thoughtful and, and be strategic and intentional about what you share um, because th that, you know, whatever you write on the internet is there in permanent ink. <laughs> Even if you try to delete it, you know, it all comes back to haunt you. So um, especially if students are young and have just kind of used social media as a platform for playing, uh, you want to think about it in a different way. Right. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us and your generosity. My pleasure. The synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Vicky and Becky have known each other for a long time. What are the similarities between the two? Go on Becky's website and try to identify what metaphor she is trying to paint for us. There are four websites. Weavinginfluence.com, 12minutemedia.com, teambuzzbuilder.com, and teamfaithbuilder.com. And finally, what is the essence of Becky Robinson's message to you?